So over a year ago, I did an experiment to test how to get rid of aquarium snails from recently purchased live aquarium plants. And the clear winner was alum. But what if there's a better solution out there? Only one way to find out. Keep watching as I share the results of my plant experiments part two with salt, hydrogen peroxide, and potassium permanganate. Hi, I'm Irene with Girl Talks Fish, here with practical tips on nanofish and planted aquariums. And yes, I just dedicated a whole other month of my life to finding out which chemical treatment is best for getting rid of snails and snail eggs from newly purchased plants before they ever hit your display tank. The criteria for success, which I'll show you from last time's results, are did it kill the snails, did it kill snail eggs, and then did the plant survive? For the experiment's conditions, I deliberately went and bought snail-infested java firm from Greg Sage of SelectAquatics.com, which I'll link down in the description below. And each of the plants were put in their own separate one-gallon um, plastic shoebox-sized container with no heater, no filter, so it's probably like room temperature water in indirect sunlight. If the chemical treatment failed to kill the adults, it was immediately taken out of the running. Versus if the adults didn't survive, I went ahead and kept them in the tubs for one month, doing manually doing partial water changes every one to two days. I basically would kind of tip the water out of the tub so only the surface water was poured out, refilled it. That way I would make sure that no baby snails got poured out accidentally and escaped my notice. As for which concentrations to use, uh, the internet has a ton of anecdotal recipes out there, so I just went with whatever was most commonly recommended. Treatment number one is aquarium salt, and I basically tested two recipes. The weak salt dip was one tablespoon of salt per gallon of water, uh, dip it in for 10 minutes, rinse it really well, and then put it in fresh water versus the strong salt dip was one cup of salt per gallon of water. Dip it only for 15 to 20 seconds with no roots in the salt dip. Whoops. Uh, rinse it and then go ahead and put it in fresh water. Now for the weak salt dip, uh, definitely saw the adult snails moving around day five, so that didn't work. This was also the only experiment where I saw a lot of planaria, so not sure if they were hitchhiking on the other plants or not. For the strong salt dip, um, unfortunately I accidentally threw away the adult snails before waiting long enough to see if they would revive, but it doesn't matter because by day nine, I definitely saw that baby snails had hatched and the eggs were viable. So bottom line, neither of the aquarium salt experiments worked, definite fail. For treatment number two, we've got hydrogen peroxide. Uh, the 3% concentration is very cheap, commonly found at your local drugstore. And as you can see from the solid colored bottle, it breaks down very easily when exposed to light. So for the duration of the treatments, I tried to put those tubs um, in complete darkness whenever possible. For the weak bath solution, you basically put two to three milliliters of hydrogen peroxide, which is about half a teaspoon per gallon of water, and then you just leave the plant in there without any water changes because hydrogen peroxide breaks down so easily. Now for the, what I'll call the 25% dip, that's 25% hydrogen peroxide and 75% water. So in my case, about four cups of hydrogen peroxide and 12 cups of water. You're gonna leave the plant in there for about 20 minutes take it out and then put it in fresh water without rinsing apparently. The final recipe I tried was a 50% dip. So 50% hydrogen peroxide, 50% water, uh, dip it in there for 10 minutes, take it out, rinse it, and then put it in fresh water. The weak bath solution was totally useless. I mean, the snails were moving by the very next morning, which was like seven hours later. Um, I often see this recipe quoted when people want to treat their aquariums for black beard algae, but I actually had some BBA on this plant and it totally didn't affect it at all. It just gave it a nice tickly bubble bath. So maybe if I had dosed that concentration every day repeatedly for a week or more, I don't know it would have worked, but as of right now, I would not recommend this recipe. Now the 25% dip was one of the first contenders that actually made it through the whole one month experiment. None of the adult snails survived and then I never saw any baby snails hatch at all. You can see the egg sac blob things um, were definitely a milky color versus normally the viable ones uh, have a clear blob with little black dots or sorry, brown dots inside representing the baby snails. Now I did notice in this tub, there seemed to be a lot of kind of plant debris that kept falling off. Um, so I'm not sure if the plant really survived. I mean, java fern's really hardy and 
to be fair, this plant came to me already not looking so good. It had brown leaves, a bunch of holes in it. So go ahead and try this recipe at your own risk and let me know in the comments what you guys find out. As for the 50% dip, I actually did this experiment last year when I got some Myriophyllum matagrosans, which is this fluffy looking plant that looks like it's more delicate than java fern. And the great news is, um, A, the plant didn't turn brown or lose any leaves. B, it looks like all the adult snails peeled over um, and died. And then C, I never had any baby snails hatch at all. So the only caveat to this experiment is I can't guarantee for sure that there were any snail egg sacs on the plant in the first place. So I'd have to do more testing to find out. Bottom line, I think the two hydrogen peroxide dips really show some promise. I personally like hydrogen peroxide better than other chemicals like bleach and potassium permanganate, which are really deadly to handle. And then plus it easily breaks down into water and oxygen, especially when exposed to light. Um, the only thing is I just, I ran out of snail infested plants. So I would definitely have to run these experiments again to confirm. Speaking of hazardous chemicals, Treatment number three is potassium permanganate. And I don't want this video to last forever, so I'm just gonna let you know that the adult snails survived both of my attempts to kill them with a weaker and a stronger concentration. I mean, maybe if I had done an even stronger concentration for attempt number three, it would have worked, but I really don't like this stuff. First of all, there are no good recipes for this stuff online. You're just supposed to eyeball it until the water turns dark pink which is super annoying for people like you and me that are trying to replicate it. Secondly, apparently potassium permanganate comes in like at least three commercially available forms, either a liquid, crystals, or powder. I really wanted to use the liquid form, but it was like impossible to locate in my area. I think it's either um, illegal or highly regulated because even this powder stuff um, took forever to reach me because it could only be shipped via ground transportation. Oof. And then you can see on the jar, there's a bunch of like hazardous chemical icons and warnings at the wazoo. Apparently this stuff can be used to start fires. Um, I was definitely a little bit nervous about handling it. it, was using gloves and all sorts of protection. And then I noticed on my white bathroom tiles that purple pink droplets were staining them. It looks like when they were packaging this stuff, there was like a thin coating of dust on the outside and if it, the jar came in contact with moisture, it immediately dissolved and started staining my bathroom. Great. Now I'm gonna have to find some hazardous chemical, I don't know, disposal place to try to get rid of this stuff. Ugh. Treatment number four is, yes, alum again. And the reason why is I had a, I, you know, I thought this recipe was totally bulletproof, so gentle and effective. And then I completely destroyed a $20 bag of guppy grass that I bought at an auction. So whoops. Um, the experiment that I ran before was one tablespoon of alum per gallon of uh, water, run it for about three days, and then you can rinse it and put it in the aquarium. However, what's the minimum amount of time that I can put the plants in the alum solution while still rendering the snails inactive? The results are when I tried that concentration for one hour, it failed. When I tried it for two days, it definitely worked. And then when I tried it for one day, well, I think it worked. So basically at this point in the experiment, I was running out of snails to test on. So the plant and um, snails and snail eggs that I used were technically from the strong salt dip experiment and I had already been through that. So to confirm and narrow down that window, I definitely need to do more testing. In summary, hydrogen peroxide looks very promising, needs more testing. Alum is still my go-to method at the concentration of one tablespoon of alum per gallon of water, soak for two days, at least for now. And then just remember, your mileage may vary. I was obviously using java fern in these cases, but who knows how it'll react if you try something more delicate like guppy grass. Um, comment below with what methods you recommend for treating your plants when you first get them. And then if you missed my results from last time, I still have that video over here with my results using bleach and copper. Take time to enjoy your aquariums and I'll see you in the next video.